Recycling is being revolutionised by scientists at UNSW Sydney who are creating the next generation of green materials. Professor Veena Sahajwala is the Sanchia Professor behind the work at UNSW. Professor Sahajwala, firstly, congratulations. You've just been awarded the Clooney's Ross Innovation Award for your now globally recognised waste transformation technologies. What does this mean for you and your work? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And absolutely, it's an honour to receive the Clooney's Ross Award uh, from ATC. And I think it really is a recognition that in Australia, we do care about waste and its transformation, basically bringing together recycling and manufacturing technologies so we can actually show to the rest of the world that waste is really not a waste. It's a raw material. It really requires manufacturing processes and innovations to show that we can transform them into high quality value added products and i think to me that's going to be an important part moving forward that as the world thinks about decarbonization as we think about circular economy there are so many different ways in which we can achieve a lot of these goals of decarbonization and recycling and i think to me australia can really show that leadership in bringing in all these complex raw materials uh, because we can see that them as resources for manufacturing high quality products. So what does the future look like in terms of repurposing waste? Well, I think, you know, when it comes to waste recycling, we have to actually start to see it being coupled and well aligned with manufacturing, which means, of course, we've got to be very clearly focused on the products that we're making and whether they are fit for purpose. So what kind of markets do we expect these products to go into? So whether we're talking about making green steel or green ceramics, the ability to bring in waste resources, you know, like with our polymer injection technology to bring in waste tires, or for example, with green ceramics, we're bringing in waste glass and waste textiles. But in all of these cases, the ability to make high quality products and they are fit for purpose and of course technologies that can be effectively scaled to deliver the kinds of outcomes that the world is looking for. How can sectors like the construction industry start utilising this technology? Yeah, look, I mean, you know, for us, the collaboration and partnership with end users, um, absolutely critical. So whether it is about looking at metals or ceramics, ultimately there are many different applications and we've got to meet, in fact, the quality requirements. So, for example, if we are going to put in, um, you know, ceramic products like our green ceramics, even though they're made from waste glass and waste textiles, it's about showcasing that these meet the expectations, whether it's the end engineering properties that we're measuring, whether it is indeed um, the, the way these products perform in a real world setting for us to be able to partner up with end users, but more importantly, also have those manufacturing partners. For example, our SME partner, Kandui Technologies, looking to set up our micro factories. And that kind of collaboration means that we can actually deliver those kinds of products to to different end users, which is where we're seeing the interest and the demand really continuing to escalate. And what kind of gains are you seeing in the use of, say, green steel? Look, absolutely. I mean, I think with green steel, it's um, no question um, that we are looking at different ways in which we can uh, decarbonize. And it is a complex uh, set of questions we have to answer. Of course, Australia produces and has always been uh, a dominant player when it comes to raw materials like iron ore. And the world is looking to decarbonize. And the world, of course, uh, has been a market for a long time for Australian resources. So I think how do we bring in those resources in a way that our end users, those steel makers, can actually start to utilize Australian raw materials in the production, of course, of green steel, which means we've got to understand those materials, but we've got to also be innovative in the way we think about technological advances. So whether we're looking at making steel, for example, in our case, in an electric arc furnace uh, process, where of course, if we want to decarbonize, we need to bring in renewable energy, but also at the same time, we need to start to think about, of course, the kinds of raw material feedstock. Um, so for instance, if we want to eliminate the need for coal and coke in these technologies, um, what our polymer injection technology does is introduces uh, rubber as part of the process. And that injection, liberates 
really those hydrogen molecules in situ inside uh, that furnace and the ability to really access uh, these clean and green hydrogen molecules from waste resources that are very efficient uh, in doing the job inside the furnace of really converting iron oxide into iron and steel. Those are the kinds of innovations that we've got to look for, innovative pathways built on the foundation of science, technology and partnerships with industry.